us this evening. Anoint your word, anoint your servant, and anoint your viewers. And through the power of your Holy Spirit, your spoken word, bring conviction, conversion, and transformation. For we pray in no other name but the sweet and wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Let's get to the word. Our subject, even as we continue to look at nature, our subject is just a little salt. Just a little salt. Turn your Bibles, everybody, to the book of Second Kings. Second Kings chapter 2. Second Kings chapter 2. And I will read from verse 19. Then the men of the city said to Elisha, Please notice the situation of this city is pleasant as my Lord sees, but the water is bad and the ground is barren. And he said, bring me a new bowl and put salt in it. So they brought it to him. Then he went out to the source of the water, cast in the salt there and said thus says the Lord I have healed the waters from it there shall be no more debt or barrenness so the water remains healed to this day according to the word of Elisha which he spoke amen what a tremendous miracle and experience the city of jericho after the ascension of the prophet elijah um, elisha sojourned there for a while and it was at that time a very fruitful and pleasant oasis in the uh, desert in the wilderness of judea so much so that the neighboring um, cities uh, coveted Jericho for their prosperity, for the, 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 the refreshing and pleasant and fruitfulness of the valley. But after a while, uh, the water, the wholesome and refreshing water of Jericho became tainted and corrupt. And as a result, the entire valley became barren. The entire valley became unfruitful. The entire valley became dry. As a matter of fact, when you study Joshua chapter 6 and verse 26 and 1 Kings 16 and verse 34, you see where indeed a curse was placed on all the rebuilders of Jericho and if they should go and rebuild then the Lord would curse but what did when Elisha was told and it was brought to his attention that the fruitful valley of Jericho uh, the, 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 the well watered valley of Jericho is now polluted and the land is barren Elisha did something special hear me tonight somebody Elisha asked them for a clean bowl he asked them uh, 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 for salt and he poured the salt into the water and the salt the water became fresh the water was cured the water was purified the water became pure and the land was again fruitful let me hasten 
to tell you that there was no virtue in the salt that caused such a great miracle. The salt was just a representation of the restoring power of Jehovah God. It was God's power at work. And the Bible says that the water remains healed to this day. And friends, viewers, true to the word of the Lord, today there is a spring that is called the Elisha fountain that keeps flowing in that place even right now. It continues to water the valley. It continues to flow. Life healing, life sustaining food. Making that valley a delight and beauty. And the message thereof is that the Lord in his compassion was willing to heal the spring at Jericho. So also he is willing to heal the hearts of men and women who are with spiritual maladies. The person who is still in sin can be encouraged that there is healing, there is cleansing, there is purification in Jesus Christ. But salt has always been a means of purification. I, I, I tell you, as I, as I do my research on these subjects, I'm learning so much. Didn't even realize that uh, the purification that is used today, the purifying method that is used with, 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 with chlorination has one of its distinct components salt salt is a means of purification salt has been used for purifying and preserving things large quantities of water today are treated with the salt ingredient salt is indeed a preservative salt is indeed used to prevent rottenness and decay as a matter of fact talk to me somebody when you when we grew up as a child salt was used to preserve so many things i remember that butchery oh young people don't know that remember that butchery when you have to hang the meat uh, and you dry it with the smoke remember that barrel when you used to corn some meat and there is one that we can't call adventist but some of you used to corn it anyhow salt is a preservative salt represents purity salt represents truth talk to me somebody Woo. let me quickly get to the meat of the matter the poison waters of jericho signify the polluted word that is being preached today in pulpits but please take note that as a result of the polluted water the entire land was fruitless because the water was polluted 
pollution is a hindrance to fruitfulness pollution is a hindrance to productivity uh, the, uh, uh, the, not only the spiritual world has been polluted but all around us is pollution pollution in education pollution in all the things that man put his hand to the waters of education are polluted the waters of religion are poison the land is barren and desolate because of the pollution that has been presented but thanks be to god Woo. i want every adventist to sit up i want every visitor to, to, to be attentive please because in a land of pollution seventh day adventist we have the purification it is thus saith the lord I wish somebody will say amen. Joe Wright. Joe Wright. Pastor Joe Wright. Was asked to open the new session. Of the Kansas Senate. And he was asked to pray. For the opening of the senate meeting and when he started his prayer he prayed passionately and he called a country to repentance some of the senators got upset and walked out in the midst of his prayer but here portion of the prayer of Joe Wright, Pastor Joe Wright he said, Heavenly Father, we come before you asking for your forgiveness and seek direction and guidance. We know your words. Woe unto those who call evil good. But that's exactly what we have done. We have lost our spiritual equilibrium. Our values are inverted. Then he said, we confess, for we have ridiculed the absolute truth of your word and call it polarism. We have worshipped other gods and call it multiculturalism. We have endorsed perversion and call it alternative lifestyle. We have exploited the poor and call it luxury. We have neglected the needed, needy and call it self-preservation. We have re rewarded laziness and call it welfare. We have killed unborn and call it choice. We have shot abortionists and call it justifiable. We have neglected the discipline of our children and called it building self-esteem. He said we have abused power and called it political savvy. We have coveted our neighbor's possession and called it ambition. We have polluted the air with profanity pornography and call it freedom of expression we have ridiculed the time honored values of our forefathers and call it enlightenment that's Joe right but Rick Warren even brought it home more plainly Rick Warren in his sermon we live in his sermon hope is my anchor here is what Rick Warren says. We live in a world of chaos. 
a world where wealth is idolized truth is minimized life is trivialized abortion is legalized television is vulgarized advertisement is sensualized everything is sexualized and commercialized our conscience has been desensitized education has been secularized free market has been monopolized races are polarized politics are polarized sports are scandalized morals and ethics are liberalized entertainment crime is sensualized sensationalized I I immortality is popularized drugs is legitimized sin is glamorized drugs legitimized breakup of family is rationalized courts are paralyzed manners are uncivilized christians are demonized and god is marginalized that's the world that we live in that's the world that we are living in is an upside down world it's a world that is filled with poison it is a world where the waters waters are poison and if 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 if, if the waters are poisoned then the world is going to be fruitless it's going to be barren in the land Let me hasten to tell you though, Seventh the Adventists, all we need in a world that is poisoned is a little salt. Is a little salt. Just a little salt will do. Uh, one of the poisons that is being shared and is being spread uh, by preachers and teachers by religious preachers and religious teachers a poison that is going around that has reached far and wide has hit even the highest place of governance they have removed it from the halls of Congress they have removed it from courtrooms they have removed it from schools and they're preaching that the commandments of God is done away with that's a lie that's a poison we should have some Adventists who can help me with this message tonight one of the great poisons going around he said the commandments are not binding anymore and i tell you friends that we the, 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 the country is affected the world is affected because people are moving away from thus said the lord and as a result the waters are poisoned as a result the land is barren seven adventists all we need to do is just a little salt because when it is said that uh, the commandments of god are done away with let's throw in the salt of john 14 15 if you love me keep my commandments Let's throw in the salt of John 14, 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. 
God's love will always lead us to obedient to his commandments. So when the poison is presented, let's place the salt of John 14, 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. Let's put in the salt of John 15, 10. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I and my Father. Just as I've kept my Father's commandment and I abide in his love. Hear me somebody. When, when, when the poison of uh, the abolishing of God's commandments is presented and is circulating, put a little salt of John 15, 10. Put a little salt. And, and, and when they ask you, are, are all the commandments still binding? Put in the salt of First John chapter 5 and verse 3. This is love for God to obey his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. Thanks be to God. Seventh-day Adventists, when the poison is going around, we have the salt of God's truth. We have the salt of God's truth. And the truth is that his commandments are true. His commandments are sure. Let it purify every lie. Let it, let, let it preserve the truth of God. A lawyer, if they ask you, then which commandment is the greatest commandment? as the lawyer did to Jesus then you throw in the salt of Matthew 22 37 and 38 you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind this is the first great commandment and the second is like unto it you shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and all the prophets. Show in the salt of God's word. His commandments are to be kept. And the commandments are divided. Love for God and love for for human beings the first four will tell us of love for god throwing the salt in a world of impurity let the salt of god's truth purifies every lie and then the second branch of commandments love for man and therefore jesus christ summarize the commandments you must love god and you, you must love your fellow neighbors love always lead to obedience and when somebody tells you that the commandments are done away with tell them no put in a little salt or the truth of god's word and then somebody may say put in a little uh, bitterness, impurity. Somebody will spread uh, the water of impurity by saying that it is only his grace that saves and grace abolish the law. That's a lie. That's impurity. And we need the salt of Titus chapter 2 and verse 11 for the grace of God that bringeth salvation appeared to all men nobody is saved by the law we are saved by grace but grace
compels us to keep the law. If you love me, keep my commandments. Put in Romans chapter 6 verses 14 and 15. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under law, but you are under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? Certainly not. God forbid. Grace will always lead to obedience. And when they talk about grace abolishing the law, hit them with the salt of Romans chapter 3. And verse 31, do we then make void the law through faith? Certainly not. On the contrary, we establish the law of God. We preserve the law of God. We purify and maintain the law of God. And when the falsehood, the impurity, of the command, the abolition of the commandments hit you. Let them know uh, the salt of First John 2 and verse 4. He who says, I know him and does not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. Uh, the truth is not in you. So friends, let it be echoed across the world. Let it hit parliament. Let it hit congress. Let it hit senate. Let it hit the highest. Let it hit Buckingham Palace. Let it hit the House of Commons and the House of Lords. Let it hit all places of governance. A man's law is inferior to the law of God. The law of God stands forever. And hear me. As I hasten to a close. That friends. No matter what. Man will change. Man's law will change. But God's Ten Commandments, it is a salt. It stands forever. It is a truth that purifies us. It's the truth that points us to our sins. It's the truth that talks about the character of God. And I will never forget one evening when we were having our Bible class, I will always remember Pastor Rabbi Brown says, for you to get rid of, of the commandments, you have to kill God. For you to get rid of the commandments, you have to kill God. And there is no nuclear weapon. There is no COVID-19 that can touch my God. Talk to me, somebody. He is eternal. He is eternal. So when, when the poison, poisonous water that tells that the commandments of God are done away with, put the salt of God's word in that water. It will purify, it, 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 it will make the land productive. I'll say to rulers, we are in the predicament that we are in. Crime is on the rise. Problems plague in the land because we have moved away from thus saith the Lord. We have moved away from the word of God. Now let me bring it home. That in our personal lives also, in our personal lives, we, 
will have difficulties. Our water will be poisoned. Our lives will be fruitless unless we can stick by thus saith the Lord. And I'm not talking about riches. For you have some very notorious individuals who are still rich. But we're talking about prosperity. We're not only talking about life here on earth, but we're talking about eternal life in Jesus Christ. And when uh, they proclaim uh, the water, polluted water, the lie that God's commandments are done away with, put a little salt in it. Put a little salt. Put the salt of Revelation chapter 12 and verse 17. And the dragon was wrought with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Those who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. So the devil is wrought with a church that keeps the commandments. Guess what? The truth of the matter is, I rather the devil be wrath with me than the devil be in love with me. Because if the devil is mad with me, it's, it's, it's a clear indication that I'm walking according to God's way. I'm walking according to God's will. I'm walking according to God's commandments. Let the devil be wrath. But if the devil is in love with you, then that is to say, you're walking the way he wants you to walk. You are his comrade. You are hand in hand with him. But church of the living God, seventh day Adventists, when religious poisons are presented put the salt of God's truth put the salt of God's word and dilute such polluted water and praise God when they present that the commandments are done away with tell them that there is a church tell them that there is a body of believers who keep the commandments of God and who have the testimony of Jesus put the salt of revelation 14 12 here is the patience of the saints here are those that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus thank God for the commandment keeping church thank God that when people say the commandments are done away with there is a church there is a body of believers who will preach the salt of God's word thus saith the Lord tonight I call upon you brothers and sisters tonight I call upon you let the salt of God's word purifies your heart let the salt of God's word transform your life. Obey the commandments of God because the commandments of God are true. They are righteous. They are holy. They are just the commandments of the Lord stand forever. Heaven and earth shall pass, but not one word shall pass from the commandments of the Lord hear me tonight 
you will see uh, the waters, poisonous water being shared. People will talk about the commandments of God are done away with. But let the salt of God's truth purify your mind. Let the salt of God's word purify your hearts. Let the salt of God's word lead you to see that the commandments of the Lord are still binding. I ask you, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand for the truth of God's word because his commandments endure forever. Seventh-day Adventists, stand up. Put the salt of God's truth into the waters that are polluted. Put the salt of God's truth into lives that are polluted. May God use us to purify, to transform, to change, and to bring home his children to an obedience of God's word. And hear me, prime ministers, hear me, queens and kings and presidents and princes, hear me. If you want your land to be fruitful, if you want your valley to be refreshing. Stand by the word of God. Stand by the word of God. Stop presenting poisonous water. Let the salt of God's word purifies that impure water. And personally for each person, each person watching, personally, there are a number of you who have been drinking poisonous water. Some of you deliberately, some of you unknowingly, but this evening, you have heard the truth of God's word. Take the salt of his word. Let it purify your heart. Let it purify your life. Don't drink any longer. Hallelujah. Don't drink any longer. From a fountain that is impure. Don't drink any longer from a poisonous fountain. Drink from a purified fountain. And my Bible will tells me that your life will be productive. Your life will be fruitful. Your life will indeed be blessed and oh hallelujah the waters shall flow down continuously the water the purified water shall flow down continually and your life shall be meaningful your life shall be productive your life shall be fruitful all you have to do is to trust and obey but there is no other way to be happy in Jesus. No longer should you drink from the impure fountain when the salt of God's truth can purify your life. You know the truth of God's word. You know the truth of God's word. Young man, you have been running from the truth for a long time. Young lady, you have been walking from the truth. But it is time to trust and obey God's commandments are true and unchangeable and still binding 
as we go further in nature speak when we see more of the truth of God's word when we walk with the Lord to glory hallelujah somebody you have been denying the commandments you have been drinking from an impure fountain. The salt of God's truth has now purified your thoughts, purified your fountain. Will you stand and obey? Wherever you are, trust and obey. There is no other way. Sing the song. Sing it to be happy. Somebody needs to walk away from a corrupt fountain and drink from the fountain that is purified. Drink from the fountain of God's truth. Not a cloud in the sky. Come on. God is moving on somebody's heart. Quickly drive it away. Not a doubt. Nor a fear. Not a sign nor a tear. Can abide while we trust and obey. Somebody, no matter how young you are, no matter how old you are, you may have been drinking from a poisonous fountain, but the pure truth, purified truth of God's word is facing you tonight. Will you trust and obey? Not a burden we bear. Praise God. Praise God for the salt of his word. But our toil does reach we repay. Sing the song, not a grief or a loss. Not a throne or a cross. Best if we trust and obey. Go to our decision card online. Sign your decision card. Standing up for the truth of God's word. Drinking from a purified fountain. No longer a polluted fountain. But we are drinking from a purified fountain. But to trust and to live. Our last stanza as we sing, sign of the card. Never can prove the delight of his love. Until all at the altar we lay. For the favor. He shows for the joy he bestows, or for them who will trust and obey. Come on, somebody, trust and obey. Stand up for the truth of God's word. There is no other way. To be happy in Jesus. But to trust and obey.